What is up guys, NYK31 here, bringing you a game of NCAA 13, a friends list game, using, I'm using Cal, my opponent is using Baylor. This was a fun game to play, using these um, lower tier teams, it's fun, but the one thing about them is that they play zero defense, they have nothing on defense, so, well you're going to see how the game ends up. But, um, anyhow, I'm running one of my custom spread playbooks. And he's running a custom spread playbook. We're both playing an up-tempo spread, no huddle style. But, as I yap to this video, I'm simultaneously trying to get my grub on, as well as get ready to watch Oklahoma and Texas A&M, and I'm hoping and praying to football gods that um, Johnny Football saves this bowl week, because these BCS bowl games, they sucked. They were just flat out crap dog games. The most competitive one the Rose Bowl was a crap game. I mean, yeah, it was a close game, but nothing really, you know, occurred in that game that was particularly memorable, stood out. It was just, you know, Stanford eventually deciding, wait a minute, we're better than this garbage five-loss team, let's play. The Orange Bowl was a horrible game. The Sugar Bowl was a horrible game. Fiesta Bowl was a horrible game. Just a mess. A complete mess. So hopefully Oklahoma shows up. I have no idea what to make of Oklahoma because, you know, Oklahoma has become this team since um, Bob Stoops' last national championship squad that somehow finds a way to win 11 games every year but never win a meaningful game. I mean, they have... You know, the talent to play with anyone, but they find ways to lose two games a year and end up having a, you know, forgettable season, even though they win a ton of games every year. So, you know, who knows with Oklahoma? Hopefully Oklahoma shows up and Johnny Football hasn't gotten, you know, too fat and heavy and hungover celebrating his Heisman Trophy. And we get a good game before Monday. He's at midfield. As far as the best games, Clemson LSU was the best game of New Year's Day. That was a great game. I've really become a Taj Boyd fan. Boyd has kind of grown on me. Really fun guy to watch. Um, I would say the quarterbacks I enjoy to watch the most. Boyd, Johnny Football, um, the Baylor kid, much better than I thought. The Baylor quarterback is a real good player. Um, who else? Rose it to the outside. Bridgewater, like watching him. Mariota, Klein, of course. I like Colin Klein. Hope he gets a shot. I mean, if someone can burn a first-round draft pick on Tim Tebow, um, Colin Klein definitely deserves a shot. And I also like Landry Jones too. He's had a good career, good college quarterback. I'd like to see him go out playing well. They'll run the option. Baylor UCLA, despite it being a blowout, was um, a fun game. Really like what Baylor does. The other very good game was the Alamo Bowl. Texas, Oregon State was a very good game. South Carolina, Michigan was a good game. I mean, how how good is Javian Clowney? I mean, that guy could be the first pick in the draft right now if he could come out, but he'd be the first pick in the draft whenever he decides to come out. But that guy is just flat out scary. I mean, he's insane. Here's the Nebraska-Georgia was, uh, you know, I was kind of hoping Nebraska would play better than that, but going back to the BCS, not a good year for the BCS games. And I'm not a guy who's, you know, a college football playoff proponent. I like the bowl games. I'm a bit of a traditionalist when it comes to college football. I like the tradition of the bowl games. I like getting the weird matchups. I like just having a um, month of just, you know, nonstop college football where you have, you know, almost a game every single day to watch. 
I love that. It's almost like a little, you know, mini season within the season. And a playoff system would kind of ruin that because I don't think you can have a college football playoff, a real one I'm talking about, not this, you know, bogus thing that they have that's going to go into effect, I think, two years from now. Because all that's going to do is prevent a school like NIU from ever getting a shot at these BCS games ever again. All it, is is, all it is is another way for the Big East, the Big Ten, ACC, Big 12, Pac-12, SEC, and Notre Dame to um, divvy up the pie amongst themselves in a different way. In order to have a real playoff system, you have to nuke the Bulls. Because, you know, the logistics of a bowl game are pretty difficult. And if you use bowl games to host sites, those games won't sell out. Because you have all the planning, the expense, the travel, the tickets. You know, who's going to go to, you know, a Sugar Bowl game, which is which is a quarterfinal or a semifinal. And then, you know, plop down the expense for another game, you know, after that. I mean, it's just a lot to ask for. But I'd much rather watch a playoff game. I'd, rather, I'd much rather watch, you know, Notre Dame, you know, hosting Florida than, you know, watch the mess that was um, Florida State NIU. So, as long as we have the bowl games in existence, we're not going to get that kind of format. We're just going to continue to get ways to kind of, you know, half-ass it and do it in a way that ensures that the power schools get the um, biggest pieces of the pie. I'll get into my um, Notre Dame, Alabama breakdown, um, you know, before Monday, but I just want to touch on the uh, BCS bowl games and uh, get your guys thought on what you guys think of it. Do you like the bowl games? Do you want to see a college football playoff? Do you think a college football playoff and the bowl games can coexist? I can certainly understand the um, playoff advocate's point of view. Because the problem with these BCS matchups is that you know going in, despite what the uh, rankings say and the uh, name recognition of the teams, you know going in if you're getting a legitimate matchup or not. And Oregon, K-State is a prime example of that. You know, I have a ton of respect for Bill Snyder and what he's done in building up that program. Turning Kansas State into a legitimate national championship contender, not once. You know, doing it once would be a great job, but to do it once, retire, come back, and do it again. I mean, that's one of the great program building jobs of all time. Bill Snyder is an all-time great coach, but... He doesn't have the players that Oregon does. You know, he doesn't have the athletes that a school like um, LSU can attract. Or, you know, Alabama. He doesn't have those kind of players. And it shows. You know, Oregon just has, you know, too much speed. Oregon's become a national program where they recruit all over the country. They recruit, you know, California very well. Texas, Florida. You know, they get the pick of the litter. You know, they become that kind of powerhouse um, program. They have the cachet. They have the Nike money. You know, the Nike money, may, which may lead to NCAA sanctions, but a school like K-State can't compete with that. And, you know, it's shown on the field. If you have a playoff, who's to say that a team like... Clemson, who, when their offense is clicking and scoring like anyone, can't get hot, win three games in a row, play for a national title, and win one. It's certainly possible. And you'd get just as intriguing matchups, maybe even more so, with a playoff format than you would with the BCS bowl games. I mean, I'd love to see the Gators or Georgia 
FSU, you know, playing, you know, at Notre Dame Stadium. I'd love to see a playoff game between Texas A&M and Oregon. How fun would that game be? You know, but we, you know, don't have that because these bowls have their tie-ins. They're aligned with these conferences, and you don't get the, um, you know, you don't always get the marquee matchup that you would hope for or that you would want to see. But as long as the uh, BCS conferences and TV money control college football, I don't really see a true playoff format ever happening. And here we go. The defense has showed up very briefly in this game. But, <laughs> but as you can see, we have 41 points on the board for Baylor, and I forced a ball there. Should have gone to the corner on that smash play. They'll give it off, and got to force at least, or no worse than a field goal attempt. Which I do. I like this spread playbook that I got here. Um, it's basically as close a clone to Notre Dame's offense, Brian Kelly's current system, that I could find and that I could replicate. And I feel like I've done a pretty good job, but now I have to move the ball. Got to move the ball, get it back, move it again. Just under two minutes in the game. Tick-tock goes the clock. And coming up here is a classic reason why I don't like, um, or I don't believe in a zone read style of spread, or based spread. And that is getting your QB hurt, as no one's really open or breaks open late. I have to scramble, and he gets popped. Because he's carried the ball probably about, you know, eight times this game, and, you know, he gets hit. To throw. Combine that with sacks, and, he's hit before he and I just don't want my quarterback getting Second banged hand. up that much unless he can handle it, unless he has the They'll carry rating to handle it. Receivers. If I'm running out of time, running Looks out of time pass. and field, Makes the catch and look out. He goes a nice out little flood. It looks like they're going to blitz. Got some space to get that sucker in there. So I protect and throw that sucker on the break. And now it's up to the onside kick, which I never get back. I don't know how to do onside kicks very well. I just kick it low with about medium power and hope for the best. But not enough to pull it out. Well played game. Fun game to play. Back and forth, up and down. Basketball on grass with two putrid defensive teams. <laughs> So the game obviously leans toward the offensive side of the ball to begin with. So when you combine that with bad defensive players, you get 41-38. <laughs> so, hope you guys enjoyed. Talk to you all later. Peace. So that wraps things up for us. For EA Sports, Aaron Andrews and Kirk Herbstreet. Brad Nessler saying thanks, and we'll see you next time.